All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and we're doing a little flipperoo switcheroo. Uh, we do have Bobby and me both here, except uh, I'm going to be hosting it due to technical difficulties on Bobby's end. So it'll give me a chance to first uh, explain to everybody what an awful DFS player I am. Uh, maybe not an awful DFS player, more just like an awful human being, I guess. Uh, so we talked <laughs> about this yesterday, uh, both in the early stream and the live stream, where I made all the different cases of why I thought Aaron Nola was a really, really great pivot off of um, – off of uh, off of Woodruff and certainly off of the combination of Woodruff and Kirby and and Bobby totally supported it. We were both into it. And one of us played it and one of us did not. And the one who did not owes push ups or, or something. I, and I just literally have no excuse of why I didn't do it other than I just uh, just didn't feel like it. Um, and these are the things you have to do. I mean, you know, you have to execute your plans and you have to, you know, have faith in your in your process. And so, you know, that's why I lost. Uh, uh, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, before we get into today's slate, Bobby, how did you do yesterday? And uh, any overall thoughts before we get into it? Yeah, it made it worse on for you that the fact that nobody scored any points. You could score like 90 fantasy points and you would have gotten. You oh. Would have gotten smashed. And, um, and dude, I have Wanda Franco starting off with a home run. They start to start off. You know what I mean? I know. I know. And and, and that's and that, literally, I mean, I, I had a lot of lineups cash with nobody who had a home run. Um, uh, but I, I, I actually did well in baseball, lost a little bit in football, but, uh, ready to get back after we've only got two days left of the season and, uh, I will be going live at probably two Eastern tomorrow and covering the last, you know, slate of the, the main, the regular season, but don't worry, we'll be, we'll be around for the, for the postseason. Um, but, uh, but it is going to be the last big slates we can play. So I'm, I'm getting some exposure out there tonight. I want to make sure I'm, I'm playing And If my internet would cooperate, I would feel even better about it, but. Yeah, I'm ready to get into the slate. I will be fasting tomorrow for Yom Kippur, so I will be uh, I'll be able to put probably some projections up for, but I will not be recording. Um, and so let let Bobby take down the last uh, last main slate of the season. I'll take um, it. Yeah, we'll 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 do it. And there's you know there's as Bobby was mentioning there there's going to be the the, the content is going to be a little different just because there's not a big main slate every day day in baseball after you know we go to playoffs. But as you know, there's zillions of other sports that we're dealing with, not to mention football and all this stuff. And before before anybody gets too bored, we got hockey and basketball literally like a right. week on Friday, right? I mean, it's uh we are we are I have to recheck my 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 spreadsheets, make sure they load properly, do a little homework. We're gonna probably, with any luck, do a, a preview of the NBA and all the stuff, and uh no, no, no shortage of action. So as Bobby was saying, like today being like kind of like one of the last slates, you know, you have a couple of things going on, uh, not the least of which being, you know, motivation, uh, pitching limits, uh, lineup possibilities and things like that. Um, and not to mention, you know, it's funny, you get the th baseball season, you have this bell curve of weather, right? Like it starts off the season, all weather is terrible because it's, it's like early April. And then like it gets really, really hot. And then as we get to October, all the weather becomes terrible again, you know? So uh, that's why when you get into the playoffs, you'll see like the combination of like incredible pitching, just great bullpen work and, and bad weather, you know, that's why you get these six and a half totals in like, in like basic and like playoff baseball. Right. Um, and we'll deal with that. And it's going to, it's going to be, you know, especially in the main slates, you know, you're, you're, you're probably not going to want to play a lot of five mans. Let's put it that way um, mm -hmm. in the playoffs. So Bobby's been very well prepped for that. So okay, first game I have on the on the list is is Toronto Baltimore, and right off the bat, I got I see a yellow orange. I mean, this is another it's another issue. Yesterday, I I x the game out, and it turns out they played it to through eight through seven or something, and they actually yeah. called the game with the bases loaded in, in the top of the eighth. Yep. I, I bet you there were a couple of people who had guys waiting to come to the at bat who were a little steamed about that, but um, nonetheless. We have a similar situation here, um, but as Bobby was mentioning before, we got into this. I mean, there, there's, they do. I guess they do want to play this game, but you know, as 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 we we learn sometimes, I mean, you know, Mother Nature has her own plans, you know. So, I mean, yeah, it'd be great to play all these games, but I don't know. So, first of all, what, what's your what's your take on this game? What's your take on if they play? What's your take on the on the plays, or what do you got here? Yeah, my first my first look at this is like I I mean I think they are gonna try and force the issue and try to get a game in, uh, in general. But I I I don't know, man. This is gonna be a tough one. Um, it it does look really bad, and 
it is 51 degrees with the wind blowing in. So for two offenses that I would normally like in these matchups, I am probably not going to do much with it. If I did, it would probably be leaning on the lefties. Um, probably the, the, the most, uh, the most thing I would do, which unfortunately we don't have that many of to love uh, Mullins Santander, but I, I just think that I'm probably not going to play this game um, as of right now. And it's not, again, we saw, we saw Guerrero hit it out when the wind was blowing in yesterday um from center but he hit it out to, to left i believe um I, it's it's possible it's just doesn't seem like the right thing to do but then again we have a lot of games like that so i might need to revisit it but as of right now i've got nothing in this game the way the way i look at the slate and it's again this is just my initial look is that from a hitting perspective i have i have two teams that are kind of stand out for me and then a whole bunch of teams that are all look like guys that could play so if right. I have a slate like that, I just don't need to take this kind of risk, you know, on one of them. So um, I'm probably off of this game uh, pretty much in its entirety. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on, Tampa at Boston. And here is another one. Um, weather issues. And 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 they would like to – well, this, this one they don't have to play. Um, well, actually, I think Tampa still is in seeding talks, I think. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure about that. So like I said, Major League would like to play it and – Listen, Boston would like to play it too. They want the revenue. You know, they want to, you know, everybody kind of wants to play. Um, it looks like maybe they have a shot, you know, whatever it is. Um, let's look at the pitching though. So we have Springs against Eovaldi. And for, unfortunately, or fortunately, pitching my my it's kind of the same for me. I have one guy I'm gonna play, and then I really have no idea who the second one is, and a lot of guys come and play. I don't know what the deal is with with the pitch counts for either of these guys, you want to know the truth. Like Eovaldi, I haven't seen in a while, but I guess, oh, he came back and he pitched 72. So they could let him go. And it's not as if they're protecting him for any reason. I'm sure that they, I'm sure they'll let him go. You know what I mean? Like it's a stupid game. They don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's uh may as well let him pitch, I guess. Um, the rain is an issue. Um, and on the other side, you have Springs who, again, is part of this, Maybe I'm like overhyping the situation here, but but it's just part of this Tampa thing that's just kind of like getting ready to to f with people in the playoffs, I think. And, and Springs is Springs is seventy four hundred. I mean, I will say that I don't know what how much he's going to pitch. I don't know what he's going to do. And he's not a guy that really pitches all that much anyway. I mean, 85, 90 pitches, but I don't know, man. And listen, the, the 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 stadium is not the not the greatest, obviously, but at Springs at seventy four hundred just just as another guy to play. I'm not crossing him out. Yeah, he's on my list. It's worth it to note that he has had only bad games against Boston in five starts. That's pretty funny. And he's had almost – those are almost his only bad starts of the season, like really bad ones, you That's know? pretty funny. And, and um, so but, – but, you know, we don't even know who's playing for Boston for one thing. Right. And, 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 and I think Springs, as of right now, I'm going to put him as tentatively on the list. Um, this is going to be a very weird show because there's not going to be the easiest bold takes because – we genuinely don't even know who's playing for some of these teams yet. So it's, it is the the weird last days of the season kind of a thing. And it's like in basketball, when you have everybody, all the best plays and I mean, raw points plays end up at like 4k, you know what I mean? The last day of the year, it's uh it could be like one of those days where you end up leaving money on the table and doing stuff. But uh, as of right now, I have Springs as the only interest I really have in this game. Uh, if, if, if we're, if, if it's a good go ahead, it, it's, you know, it's, it's bad weather, but bad, as we know, bad weather in Boston doesn't maybe mean quite as much because you have the wall. It's so close. Um, so maybe your home run doesn't get out of there. It's, it's, it's off the wall in left field. Um, I think you're not, you're not necessarily playing for a ton of home runs tonight because there's not a lot of spots that are going to score a ton of them. So as of right now, I have Springs as my only interest in this game, but I'm happy to revisit it if we can't find some other stuff we like better. Um, I'm not sure we go through this if the Brewers are – out or not are are they they're, they're two games behind philly for that um whatever for that last wild card spot but i don't right. know who gets the who gets the nod there um but 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 for whatever reason i don't think it really matters in this case um, well it might because they might put a totally different if, if they're eliminated they'll put a totally different lineup out there it won't even have any of their normal guys right there. but what i was going to get at is the uh, is is the eric lauer side um of the pitching um i'm just trying to find guys who i think can go and and and, and obviously if they if, if they need to win they'll, they'll let him pitch and i actually think that if 
even if they don't need to win, I think they would let him pitch. You know, I don't know. Um, so, I, I, I think I'm pretty sure they're they're exactly two back. Um, yeah, and, but they're two back. But who gets the who gets the time? I, I, well, officially, they're, they're they're technically still one need one one thing needs to happen for them to be. Oh, eliminated. so Phillies have not clinched. Is what I'm saying. It's okay, not, it's not it's, it's not it's not over. So, yes. So, so so I think that Lauer is in play here as 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 again one of those uh, one of those second guys, and um, I have to say that although the price looks kind of intimidating, I, I have no problem with Gallon either. I'm um, in this spot. Um, you know, Milwaukee again is, uh, they're, they're not, the, they're not the, they're not the best. You know what I mean? Like you could, you could target them and look, it's not the greatest, greatest, uh, ballpark situation, you know, especially in light of everything else going on in the slate, but I would, I would keep Gallon on my list as well. Yeah. I think Gallon is the, is the guy I'd, you'd more naturally want. He's a much better pitcher than Lauer. Uh, the matchup is probably even better in some ways. Uh, he's got a higher K rate. He's goes deeper into games. He's had a fantastic season. He's probably going to finish like fourth in the Cy Young. And we don't, we talk about him like he's like, they're similar. Um, they're not that Zach Gallon's a much better pitcher, but the line of the diamondbacks put out there could, could make it a situation where you want to get Lauer. So I have both of them on the list. Gallon has a, a borderline priority for me at this point. I think he's a very good option. Um, and the $600 price difference is really insignificant today to me. So you get to any of the hitting there or no? Um, I think that it's okay uh, because of the the conditions. I think if I was going to do anything, to be honest, it might be the Diamondbacks uh, mini stack or something because they're so cheap. Uh, Carson Kelly might be at the top of the order today. He's 2.8. Jordan Luplau. Now there's pinch hit risk for these guys, but so what at these prices? 2.5K for for uh, for Luplau, uh, 3.3K for Stone Garrett. You could have a really cheap Buddy Kennedy should be in there in top near the top at 2.1 or Hager. There's a lot of guys they could put out there that I think that they might just want to let their young guys play. So I, I'm okay with the Diamondbacks mini stack, especially. That's what I would say is my favorite part of uh, the hitting in this game. Okay, going to uh, Yankees at Texas with uh, one of Judge's last opportunities to um, to get break uh, 61. And one another bit of a uh, thing to note is that this game is uh, available on the DraftKings slate only. Um, it is not available on the FanDuel slate, so just keep that in mind. And I, I, uh, I currently actually have the Yankees as my favorite um, stack on the board, um, even ahead of the Dodgers somehow. Um, that's kind of where where I'm looking at right now. Um, with the Garrett Cole thing, it's 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 um, you know I do look at the Garrett Cole play is similar to Verlander. I mean, they, there's no particular reason to pitch these guys, but. Yet on the other hand, they just always seem to pitch anyway. You know, it's it's like they had no reason to pitch Verlander in his last start, and he pitched 100 pitches or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they had no reason to pitch yet any of these guys except like look, just keep them in shape, I suppose. So I'm not too worried about that. I I just I don't know. I, I I'm currently not getting to him. That's the best I can describe this. So currently I'm not getting to Cole. I guess because of fear of of being limited. But but every every time I think that they just pitch him anyway. So. I'm looking for your opinion on that. So for me, it's it's currently Yankees and and not Cole. But well, what do you think? Yeah, going to have to see how the first game goes today. Also, you might okay. get a light lineup, which might make this even lower on. And as you mentioned, it's only on DraftKings, not on FanDuel. Um, so I I, I I I can get behind the Yankees. I also can get behind. Uh, I, I I'm okay with Garrett Cole, but I I don't think I don't think he's throwing 100 pitches tonight. Okay. He certainly doesn't have any extra leash. It's it's only going to be the 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 100 pitch you know cap and probably if he's got 85 at the end of six or something he's not probably going out there for the seventh um if he had 80 at the end of six he probably does go out there at the end of seven so it just depends on the situation but there's no reason they're going to stretch him extra um as i point out with a lot of these guys which which people haven't seemed to catch catch on to quite exactly but uh most of these guys who are quote unquote limited you'll notice an exact even number of innings at the end of their their pitches so it really depends on whether where they're at at the end of the inning and there's no way to really predict that so it's not like they're saying oh we want to go out there and get, get garrett cole whatever pitches and we're not gonna let him throw this many it's uh okay we'll probably cap put a hard cap on 100 and let him finish whatever inning he's in before that if he's going okay that's what my, my take is um but i i, I can get behind the yankees for sure uh minnesota chicago so Minnesota, got- Chicago. So somebody commented on the on Twitter saying, "Why? Why do they schedule all these games? You know, like why? Why? Why do all these teams have to play, especially the teams that 
don't have to play for anything or whatever it is. And I was made some kind of half-hearted remark that, well, you know, they all have to play because there are these pitchers that we've been trying to trying to get trying to play as chalk unsuccessfully all year. I mean, we got to get one more chance, you know, to have them bust us again. So you get I think you get another shot with Giolito, except now they're making it hard. They're making it 8,500. You know, they they were they were giving you quote unquote the free money and busting his chalk and I would say busting. I mean it's not like he got zeros, you know, he was fine. Right, right. But but I know what you mean. Yeah. But 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 you get one more shot, and wouldn't that be the best? Is if when it, they finally jacked his price up to eighty five hundred when you when you have like probably some better plays, and this is the time he 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 gets it done. I will say, as far as motivation goes, and this is listen, every team tries to win every game, whatever. White Sox are eighty and eighty. You know, getting the winning record uh, I agree with that. has to mean something. And Giolito has been, you know, listen, you, depending on who you ask, people have made a pretty solid case that he's been pretty unlucky this year. Um, and if that's the case, I mean, I, I will – I'll take a shot. You know, so I, I think he's very legit uh, in this spot. I think 8,500 is going to keep his ownership down a little bit, uh, hopefully. And I presume the weather's there like every place else. You know what I mean? Like – well, it's it's a little better actually, sixty three degrees, not not oh. fifty, and there's only four mile an hour wind volume from left. That's not so maybe it's not as as brutal. So yeah, uh, so I just have to go going against him, but I I I, I do like him today. Um, and uh, and yeah, and as far as the hitting goes, I, I'm not gonna. I, I like the White Sox. They're they're one of the teams that have like is playable uh, behind you know Yankees, Dodgers, which you talked about. Oh, we'll talk about the Dodgers again. Um, and I have Minnesota on the list, too. I mean, you could always play anybody against Giolito. Although I will also say that while Giolito has not really flashed the ceiling this year, he also has not really gotten crushed either. You know what I mean? Like, so it's not exactly the guy. He used to be the guy I would think about, like, okay, we either play him or we stack the country against him. He hasn't really gotten blitzed this year at all either, you know? Um, so I don't know if I'm going to go with the Minnesota side. So for me, it's going to be Giolito and maybe some White Sox. Yeah, I'm I'm on the board with the Giolito and maybe some White Sox. I actually don't mind the Minnesota side of this either. If you're not playing Giolito, um, probably Gordon Miranda Cave being my favorites. Um, they're affordable. Uh, it's not my favorite stack, but I, I definitely like that this game is not at least in this these horribly crippling weathers that are that are some places in the East Coast today. So no. I'm, I'm definitely more open to this game than I am the other ones that. Uh, that we've talked about. So I, I have the White Sox as the one I would use, but I'm, I'm open to Minnesota as well. So Houston, um, so Houston, Philly, I, I just kind of reiterate what I was just saying about Cole. Um, you know, I just, I mean, I don't see a reason to pitch him that much, but there was literally no reason to pitch him in the last game either, except they pitched him 101 anyway. And, you know, I think the reason why, I mean, they, they wanted, they want him to be, you know, in, in, in form you know they want him to be like in in gear whatever it is and they want him to be i guess the return him stretched out and for him you know he's cruising along or whatever it is eight strikeouts 100 pitches let him like you said he has no innings pitch which is like you know and a third you know what i mean like he just finishes the inning and he's just and now he starts the seven may as well finish it no that's the end of it you know um he's a big boy you know what i mean like he, he could he could take it whatever so um i i i feel the same way i think he's gonna probably be let to pitch i don't think it's greatest matchup but i don't think it matters too much to him and uh i think he's i think he just kind of has to be in play a little bit um as far as the hitting goes i i i do like again I, i'd like to see the lineups but i think houston's very legitimate in here i'm um, at home and good good matchup i mean excuse me a good good weather um that's pretty much it well, Houston only batted five of their guys two at bats yesterday. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I, th I think that that's oh, that's, that's over that. Okay. That, but but it depends if nobody plays them. Um, no, you can't. I can't do that. But I but I, but I don't think that you can guarantee they're going to do that every game. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. I, I'm curious. I think that tonight is more likely you'll see a different lineup out of them. Okay. Uh, but that's it's just an early guess, uh, and I I am not that interested in Verlander. Okay. Um, he's on my list, but just as a guy, um, even if he is going out there, it's not like he's getting extended for any type of trouble late in the game or any. And just you just don't you're not going to have the best version of him. But I do think that they'll let him again. You see that he threw 101 pitches, but he pitched the full seven innings. It's they they don't they don't take these guys out mid inning. 
in these situations, uh, these stop, these top aces. So it really depends on, you know, maybe getting some luck on your side and that he's only got 70 something pitches through six innings, which is totally possible. And then, and then you probably, you probably get him to stay in. Um, yeah. So, 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 so this is, so this is, this is, this is the fun of DFS, right? So you're explaining someone about DFS works and, and, and you show them this slate and you say, okay, uh, look at this dude. Look at this Sean Manaya guy. I mean, let's, let's see how he's done recently. He had 11 fantasy points. He barely had one, then 11, then five, then negative four, negative one. He's got a couple more negatives in there. And so you think, oh, well, no one's going to play him. He's going to be the, the chalkiest pitcher on the slate. Well, just so you know, he was coming out of the bullpen in those games. No, I, I, no, I get it. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and so, and so he's 65, 6,500. He's going to be the chalkiest pitcher on the slate. So that's, it's like, it's like an interesting thing about, about, I don't know, about DFS in general. Um, he's going to project to be a really, really good point per dollar play. Um, and in the end, I'm probably going to play it. Right. Um, the, 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 the question is, again, as always, is what do you get? You know what I mean? Like what, what do you get by, by, by playing the 6,500 guy that you wouldn't have gotten by playing someone else? And I guess the first question you ask is what else is there, you know, that you're, that you're going down from, like, it's not like, look, obviously I'd rather play like, like a Verlander or a Cole, even with the pitch count, I'd either rather play a Zach Allen, but is it that big of a deal to get up to Springs? You know what I mean? Um, uh, so I don't know. He, he's showing up for me as the best point per dollar play. I'm probably going to end up playing him. He certainly does carry with him some degree of risk though. Um, San Diego, I have as one of my top um, my top stats, which is kind of interesting because it's against Carlos Rodon. Part part of this is I don't is it, is it against Carlos Rodon? That's the thing. Like like right now, it shows Carlos Rodon, but I think at best he he comes out there for like for like a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I've heard like you like you that it might not even be him. You know? Yeah. So obviously that's something to keep an eye on. And if, if you don't get Rodon, I mean. I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to st stick to the, I like San Diego and not that, not that, that they're great or anything like that. They're just one of those teams that I have my secondary list and I don't see them garnering much ownership. So um, I do have the Padres up there and I'm having, I have Mania is right now my top pitcher. Yeah. I, uh, I, I have Mania on my list. Uh, just a, a guy on my list right now. I do think that I think his upside is pretty similar to the guys that were 10 K to be honest with you today. Um, but the giants are pesky. I think both sides of this game, um, you could definitely argue for some of the, some of the bats here. Um, San Diego being the more obvious side, if there's no Rodon, but I, I could certainly see the giants, you know, putting out a lineup. They actually started, started platooning a little bit less as the season went on and let some younger guys play a little bit more. So really depending on the, how the giants lineup shakes out, this is going to be one of those slates where we go live or when I go, I don't, I, when I go live at six Eastern. I don't know who I'm going to be talking about if we don't have some of these lineups out. And the, the right. Giants and Dodgers particularly may not have their lineups out yet. So it's kind of a weird slate. Um, and and it, and you you really don't know what to expect from these lineups today. So I, I have the the Giants and 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 Padres as my questionable. I'll, I'll probably play them, but I, I have them as questionable right now. I know what's going to happen in this slate. I, I've already seen the future. So this is what's going to happen. So the first, oh man, I can't believe I, I, I totally nailed this slate right now. So the Yankees in their first game in the doubleheader, Aaron Judge is going to hit a home run. Okay. That's what I think happens. Right. Then in the second game of the doubleheader, which is on the slate, they will sit Aaron Judge and yeah. maybe somebody else, and I will stack the Yankees anyway. They will score nine runs, and all I will need is a median outcome from Sean Manai to win the slate, and he will get negative two. That that is that is that is probably what's going to happen on this slate. Um, I, I've just seen the future. All right, um, I like it. I think that actually is a is a reasonable, <laughs> right? I mean, it's it's going to happen. Yeah, I was already thinking about the I'll, Yankees, but I'll, if they brought their their young guys, uh, I'll get I'll get three um, home today, runs out of uh, out of Marvin Gonzalez. I'll get like two out of Kyle, Kyle Higiosha. I'll get like you know. There's other guys, the Cabreras, and these other guys that never play, and 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 they'll lose because Manaya gets negative. Yeah, I'll tell you what though, I would actually like probably consider taking a shot on Kobe Allard if all those guys are out. But right, uh, right, right, right. And Spencer Howard. Right? Yeah. No, Colby, Colby Howard. That's Colby, Colby Howard. Allard. Colby Allard. Oh, Kobe Allard. Um, Colby oh, Allard. Oh, and this he's got some talent. That's what I've got right now. No, I have Spencer Howard in that game. Yeah, it's possible. 
<laughs> they're yeah, both bullpen. Both guys have been pitching out of the bullpen that that, that you, there's no way we there's no way we know. I don't know if the team knows, to be honest with you. All right. How um, about how about we go to Angels, Oakland, and we I think we have two other cheapos that you can play here. Why do I not have Angels, Oakland on my list here? I don't know, but uh, they're they're on the slate. There, 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 there. I missed them. Yeah, yeah. And it's sorry. Cole Irvin <laughs> against against Lorenzen, and um, I think listen, if you, if you want to play somebody of size Manaya in this in this price range, um, I, I think that these guys can get fifteen fantasy points just just like anybody else. Um, uh, I I I think that. I guess Lorenzo would have a better shot because Oakland's a little worse, you know, worse than the Angels. But I don't know. Urban's fine. Um, I think both these guys are sort of in play today, as, as, as sick as that is. Um, and I, I'll wait for you on the weather here. But I also feel as though the I don't have the I have I don't have Oakland showing up for me for some reason, but I have the Angels showing up. Yeah, I, I think both teams are are in play. Both uh, both offenses, uh, both pitchers, but especially Lorenzo, I like better. If I had to pick one, but I, I'm open to both. And I'm curious to see how the lineups are, which again, I know you're going to hear that a lot today from me, but I will go back to, to playing some A's, you know, Seth Brown at 0.7% last night paid off for me at 19 Ooh. fantasy points. 0.7. Um, that's what he was. He was 0.7% owned. And that, and by the way, he might've been the highest scoring hitter on the slate, actually. <laughs> like, I don't know if anybody got much ahead of 19. Um, so yeah, I, I'm open to both offenses here. Early, early look as Angels uh, more of a priority, but I definitely am okay with going back to Oakland pieces, um, and uh, that's what I've been doing in a lot of these things, and it's paid off pretty well. You've got Langoliers you could use as a cheap option if he's back in there. Um, obviously, Seth Brown I mentioned, uh, Sean Murphy's the only one you have to pay up for. Uh, Connor Capel, Capel, however we're supposed to pronounce it. All these guys have some, you know, there's some upside here for, for both these offenses and you don't have to hit in the worst hitting degree, hitting weather ever. It's not a great hitters park at 66 degrees. Um, you've got a little bit of wind blowing out. I, I'm okay with, 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 with trying to target this game, just in the sense that it, at least it's possible to hit a home run without a 20 mile an hour wind blowing back at your face in 50 degree weather or something, you know? Yeah. Um, pretty standard weather for Oakland. All right. So this is, this is a little strange. Washington and Mets. I don't see it as a if it's a second part of a double header. Oh, it is double header. It is. So the first not, one is not the first one is not on the slate. The second one, which is scheduled for 10 10 p.m. local time. Is that right? And it's supposed to be rained out. Is it already postponed? That's <laughs> what I'm wondering because I see these two in red, but it I just says officially. Well, I'll say this: the, the official Sheets, uh, Mrs. Sheets weather report is 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 shitty. <laughs> That's the uh, so uh, it's 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 not it's not good. Um, and I can't believe it's a ten ten. I guess that's the only. I guess that's the only time they think they can get the game in at six o'clock and ten ten. I've never heard of a game starting at ten ten local time. I don't know why they're not doing this the, the afternoon. I don't know why they didn't. Well, because the yeah, there's no play a chance they can play now. That's the thing. Literally not. Oh, because it's happening right now too. Yeah. Okay. I, you, I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. A game start at ten ten p.m. local time, in any stadium, in any in any state. I've seen it happen only from delays, but like right. in playoffs and stuff like that, when they had to travel the next day and things like that, and they had to, supposed to have a game on the other road the next day. That's like the only time I've ever seen it. Oh, well, um, it's really weird. I've never seen this. You're right. I've never seen a schedule. Never since we've done this, I've never gone through it. Um, I think the long and the short of this game would be. First of all, it looks even if they play, it looks unlikely that they'll be able to play nine innings. So I would, I, I would, I would consider gambling with Tywin Walker if the game was like a go ahead. But I don't even know if that's going to be possible. But that would be the only, the only play I have in this game. I think, I think it's just too, you know, if they play six innings and you're losing all the the expensive hitters you have to play, um, I, I don't know, man. It doesn't doesn't feel good to me. And the Yankees have the second highest run total. The, I'm sorry, the Mets have the second highest run total on the slate. Wait, so, so, so like hang, hang on one second. So what I'm looking at now, if I'm not looking at stupid DraftKings, I'm looking at game one, 4, 10 p.m. And then game two, 7, 40 p.m. I that don't looks, know why. That's, see, that, that sounds right. Right. It sounds right to me, too. I don't know why DraftKings are putting it at 10. I guess they figured that's, that's when the game's actually going to start. <laughs> I just think they had no idea what to do with it. <laughs> they yeah. really didn't know what to do. Yeah. So that's, and they're kind of in the middle of a very important 
you know, situation. Well, here. maybe what they'll do is that what do the Braves play tonight or no? Yeah, yeah, and everybody's playing today. Well, if the Braves win, the Mets are eliminated from that. So maybe they just won't play the game if the Braves win. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I mean, there's play, they're playing tomorrow anyway. They could make it up on the day where they have a 1 p.m., but I don't know what the weather looks like for tomorrow. I haven't done that that yeah. far into research yet. So I'm, I'm, I, it's, I just literally, it's, you know what? I'm getting, I really am getting prepared for the NBA because I literally cannot comment on this game until I know who's playing. I mean, like until until I know if Theo Maladon is starting, you know what I mean. I can't can't uh, I can't quite uh, I can't right. quite see whether I'm going to play Pukashevsky or or uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander or something like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly, right, right. The Oklahoma City Thunder. It's like the Oklahoma City Thunder right now. Yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, so going you know going into the final game, we don't know who's playing. Oh. The Dodgers. Let me just go through their thing. I, they I know who's play. I know who's playing. Who's playing? Dodgers are playing. That's his play. Yeah, no, I mean, great, and 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 they 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 had a terrible night last night with all their guys. Uh, you know, it's uh, I, I will I will be happy to go back to them. They had zero pinch hitters, zero pinch fielders, zero pinch anything. Ooh, that's interesting. So I'm gonna until until otherwise, this would be the night though. I think what you would see is a different lineup. Maybe not that's because they have the early the 1 p.m. games tomorrow. And it's, you know, in L.A., so this is the last – it'd be the latest to the earliest. You'd think they would rest guys tonight and then play to everybody tomorrow because they don't play for six days at least after. Right. So just keep an eye out for the Dodgers lineup. No matter what it is, it'll be my favorite stack. Um, and I think there's a reasonable chance that the, the Dodgers combined uh, for like 20 strikeouts from Urias, Haney, and whatever bullpen they use. <laughs> um, right. I think this is a, I just, I, I can't bring myself to play any of these guys. You could make an argument. It's not going to happen, but that Urias is playing for a Cy Young. So maybe you, maybe you want to get him, but he's not really, they're not like the voters aren't giving him the love he deserves. So he's not really even quite pitching for that. He probably goes five innings, maybe, maybe four. Um, maybe, maybe he goes, maybe, maybe he gets to six innings, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Sheets, where do you stand on the, on the pitching side of it? And then the hitting, I mean, I know you're, you're going to, you're going to play some Dodgers, but yeah. Who's, who gets to, who's getting the say on Alcantara? Alcantara would be the one right now. And who's getting the American? Maybe Arias does give enough innings though. Sorry. And who's Sorry. getting the, Amer- who's getting the American league? Verlander. Ver- Verlander. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I still, uh, I still, I, I, this is how old I am. I still can't, can't grasp that the Astros are in the American League. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. Oh, I know. That's, yeah. that's how old I am. Right. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the Dodgers are going to show up regardless of who plays. And um, do we get a, what, what was the, what was the ruling, by the way, yesterday, finally on the ownership of these guys? Did they end up getting really high owned or not that much? No, like, it wasn't that bad. Like, Mookie was 12%, I believe. Like, that's it? it was there were other teams much more popular than they were. Did Tampa end up more popular? Or other guys. Well, Tampa, yeah, because the, what's his name was 25% owned. Ooh, the one had or whatever, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, so 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 the, their lineup ended up pretty chalky. Um, but it was it was a little bit more spread out. Um, I don't remember what everybody else was owned from last night, but I do know that okay. it was somewhere in the 10 to teen, teen, teen percentages mostly. Um, but whoever plays for the Dodgers, I will be on the Dodgers again tonight. And and what's weird, Sheets, is that the, the ownership projections had them there all day. We just thought they'd be much more popular, and they weren't because people were afraid of the same thing that happened with Houston, which didn't happen. They didn't just didn't happen. score. Just didn't, Dodgers didn't just didn't cooperate and didn't score any runs. Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna have some interest in the Dodgers tonight. It's really hard early in the day to decide what your favorites are, but I have the Dodgers as my current favorite, uh, followed by the Angels followed by the San Diego, then San Francisco side of things. And then you get into the Yankees, White Sox, Diamondbacks, and Oakland pieces. But it's it's just a it's just sort of a a, a mishmash of of craziness tonight, huh? Yep. So with that craziness, uh let's embrace it. Let's have some fun. Let's make some money. We'll be in Discord. There's gonna be a lot of late this is gonna feel a little NBA-ish late like like. So yeah. if there's questions and things, pop them off in the Discord. I know a lot of people have given up on baseball already. Um, but still try to try to check this out because this, this there's going to end up being some ways to t- at least take advantage of some edge. And, uh, and I think we should capitalize on that. And I, my, my best baseball weeks over the last couple of months have been over the last couple of weeks, but even with this weirdness. Um, so I'm, I'm on board with it. I'm and, on board. For those of you that don't, don't remember, listen, just 
for those of you that are, you know, just not paying attention to like a slate or whatever it is, those are the slates that the good old sheets is waiting to waiting to take down. You know, those those yep. awful slates, you know, they're like, oh, I'm not doing this. Sheets won first, the tournament with 98 first, fantasy points. <laughs> first prize is only 25,000. I'm not doing that. You know, I'm, I, I got I got better things to do, you know, and, and then 102 fantasy points later, the sheets is coming up with the Oakland A's stack. Like, just get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway uh i'm in uh and uh that'll do it uh we'll, we'll yeah. come back uh shortly with uh, an nfl preview uh for this week i have my projections ready to go for that and uh good luck all right good luck everybody all right so i will send you a uh thanks and, if, and whatever you load up i'll, I'll clean up so don't worry about that part of it i'll just okay.